Well, detectives, welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by her interactive. I am your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome voiceover artist Brian S. Lewis to the show. Welcome, Brian. Hey, how's it going? It's great to have you on the show. Nice to meet you. Um, overall, you know, the one game that you are a part of, of the Nancy Drew universe, is uh, Trail of the Twister, which I really mm-hmm. enjoyed this one. I don't know about you, but as a 90s kid, I was having flashbacks to the film Twister. What about you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, while we were uh, recording it, uh, there's a bit where um, my character Pa is talking about, you know, F1, F2, F3 and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't know that they had changed over to EF1, EF2. Um, Apparently that happened somewhere between Twister and and the recording of the game. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. (laughs) Yeah. But before we jump ahead, you're still based in Washington. So you're a part of this amazing, talented group of people who live there. So tell me about how you kind of got introduced into the entertainment industry or did you do plays, other voiceover work? Yes, I I did lots of plays um, when I was in you know junior high and high school, and it's just something that um, more so than anything else, whether it's sports or or whatever, it's just something that kind of felt you know right. That sounds weird to say, but like you know, just I, I felt more myself doing that than any other thing, and so um, I just wanted to continue that if I could. Um, and uh, there was some sort of. Uh, I don't want to say barren years, but certainly some uh, years that um, after high school and uh, through college that I didn't get a whole lot of acting work. But uh, when I I eventually came into contact with uh, this group um, called uh, the Dead Gentlemen, and uh, I made a, a movie with them, and uh, we've been making projects ever since. And and Dead Gentlemen sort of sprouted off into something called Zombie Orpheus Entertainment, and same thing there, and. So we had a, a lot of good luck with them and, and uh, some really good projects. So when the audition came up for this specific game, how did you hear about it? I, I'm i not entirely sure. I believe it was something um, that we have in the Pacific Northwest called uh, TPS, which is sort of, um, you know, it's called Theater of Puget Sound. And I, I uh, was actually listening to a couple of your other podcasts, and I noticed that some other people that you've had as guests uh, I've also mentioned TPS. But it's uh, it's a fantastic little organization that, you know, is um, among many things is also sort of a a, a call board for uh, you know projects that are around, and I'm fairly confident that I saw it in there and tried out for it. There are several different you know male characters in that game. So did you you know put your name in the hat for a couple of them besides Pa? It's possible. Um, I I was only. Um, contacted back about Pa. You know, I, I certainly would. If they wanted to throw more work at me, I, I wasn't going to turn them down. But, um, yeah, I, I think they uh, they only sort of said, like, you know, um, pause, the, pause your character, and, and they didn't really talk to me about any other um, male because you're a young guy, and Pa is supposed to be in his 70s, 80s. So how did you kind <laughs> of develop that voice? Uh, well... That was uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, like in a lot of sort of situations of this nature, you you want to kind of come in prepared, and uh, so like I had prepared about three different choices for different voices they want, wanted or whatever, and one that I really liked because um, uh, around that time I had recently watched a movie called uh, Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman, and uh, I don't know if you ever seen it, but it's uh, this interesting story about Dustin Hoffman's character sort of being raised by the Cheyenne uh, Native Americans and uh, then going in um, to the English-speaking crowd and ends up getting involved with Custer and all those kinds of things. So it Dustin Hoffman actually has like about three different voices in that movie. Um, the first one is when he's speaking with uh, the other Cheyenne and you get the impression that, that um, even though they're actually speaking English in, in, in the movie, you get the impression of sort of the movie magic that they're actually speaking the native language. And then when he goes into the English speaking crowd, um, he has this sort of like twangy sort of Southern Oklahoma kind of like accent. 
And, uh, and the third voice is actually him as an old man because he's narrating his story the entire time. And like that voice is way more high pitched. It's like the, uh, the second voice is just like, you know, tweaked up to 11. So it, it sounds, sounds really up here. And, and like, I, I really liked that the way that sounded. And so, uh, I, that was one of the options that I gave to the people at her and, uh, they really liked that one. They didn't even want to hear the other ones. Um, but the, the thing about I, I did really enjoy doing that that voice. It's a lot of fun, but like it was weird because I obviously have a much lower register. And so I kept on kind of like going lower to a little bit more of kind of a comfortable uh, timber. And the biggest note I had from uh, the producers was like, higher, hi, you're doing great, but you, you need to be higher. <laughs> How you doing, Nancy? Yeah, like it, it needed, to, <laughs> needed to be much... <laughs> much higher apparently than where I was doing it all the time. So how long was your recording session with the producers and directors? Um, probably about uh, two hours or so. It, uh, so you it knew that you weren't, not to say spoiler alert, but you knew that you weren't going to be the guy. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, we we uh, we were able to bang my stuff out fairly quickly. Um, you know, and, uh, that's, it's always a, a interesting experience when you're doing a game like that, because, um, uh, not only do you have your lines, but you, they also have you record, uh, lots of other kind of like sounds, uh, like just like, hmm, and, and like, oh, and hi, <laughs> and like all these kinds of like strange things that they can kind of pepper in there whenever they, uh, they have the opportunity. And Pa has such a sad backstory that we kind of find out, you know, halfway through the game that... Mm-hmm. We we think that his wife is still alive, Ma, but we find out that's not the case. But he pretends like she is. And uh, Nancy finds out but never says anything about it. We kind of never address it again. Um, but when you kind of approached that specific part of the script, w- was there any dialogue between the producers and directors? Uh, because you were just reading it from that point, correct? Like you had just been introduced to that segment of Pa's story. I thought that it was a uh, an excellent sort of piece to um, have in there. I mean, because otherwise he's, I don't want to say two-dimensional, you know, uh, he's an interesting old coot, but like, um, you know, that really kind of like rounded him out and kind of fleshed him out um, as, uh, as because, you know, he has this experience with the, the Twisters and, and he's chosen to live there. And uh, even though they've, they've robbed him of, of, uh, his wife and, and sometimes one can assume perhaps his livelihood at one time or another. I mean that he's, he's still there. And so he, he's, um, he seems not like a, a reputable um, person to talk to uh, about this force of nature. When you played the game, what was it like for you to hear your voice in the game and then also, you know, look around the actual room that you've been discussing and all the objects and that type <laughs> of thing? <laughs> Well, that was, uh, that's always like really satisfying when that happens, when you see, when you, you know, you, you, um, you do some work and you say some things and you imagine, uh, what's around you and what you're talking about. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of time that takes place between the actual recording and, uh, seeing, you know, the finished product, but it's always really great to see that, you know, come to fruition and, and like, like, oh, that's what he looks like. Yeah, because they didn't give me any kind of um, picture of, of what he, he looked like or anything like that. It was just, you know, uh, I had to kind of imagine what he was. And uh, so um, it was it was fun to play the game and, uh, and and see my little character on there. Actually, I I uh, had to, I thought, it, I'm a gamer myself, and uh, so I thought it was going to be, you know, fairly easy. Uh, so I started on the harder level. Um, but I quickly found out that, like, uh, I, I guess I'm... I don't know, not as good a gamer as I thought I was or something. So I, uh, I was having a difficulty time progressing at the higher uh, level. So I had to kick it down to the junior level in order to get anywhere. If somebody offered the opportunity to chase a storm, would you be interested in trying it out, seeing what it's like? Oh, wow. I, that's a great question. I, um, I don't know. I think I'd like to, you know, very comfortable sitting in my own house, uh, say, yeah, of course, uh, like an opportunity to chase a storm like that. But at the moment, I don't know. Um, that seems uh, like it would obviously have its own level of, of danger to it. But uh, also, um, what a what a experience to have in one's life, you know, a, a, 
a, a ride along with some storm chasers. Yeah, that'll be that'll be great. So I'm gonna say yes. I mean, we don't have those huge things like hurricanes or, or twisters or or uh, yeah <laughs> or earthquakes. You don't earthquakes, you don't get any yeah, of those. Don't really need to deal with earthquakes very much. Very very rarely. Yeah. Mm, lucky. So that would be um that would be something else. Honestly, for me, like I would try it, but I probably wouldn't continue going for it. <laughs> well, have you ever done uh, some of the other things that you know, like uh, skydiving or bungee jumping or any of those thrill seeking activities? I'm a chicken. <laughs> I've been to Disney World 25 times, and I still have not ridden Tower Terror or Rock and Roller Coaster. Oh. Are, are are you a thrill seeker overall? Do you like? Doing, you know, bungee jumping and jumping I, out of planes. <laughs> I haven't done bungee jumping yet. I have done some whitewater rafting, and I Ooh. did um, throw myself out of a perfectly good plane. Uh, <laughs> which and what did you was, think? Well, it was it was a great, a wonderful experience. I did it with my father, but um, it I, I don't know. So I, I'm an actor, so I'm I'm used to be in front of a of a camera and and. And that's all well and good, but I noticed that there's sort of a place, a time and place for that kind of thing, and that wasn't necessarily one of those times. <laughs> there was, there was another person who was uh, also jumped out of the plane with us, and uh, they were like, "Hey, so who wants, um, you know, to be recorded um, their, their experience?" So that because they had a little GoPro uh, camera on their <laughs> helmet, whatever. <laughs> and my father looked at me like, you know, "Do you want to?" And, and I, was, I, I thought at the moment, like, "Sure, yeah, this would be great." I had documented footage of me skydiving, but I found when I actually leapt out of the plane that instead of being in the moment and enjoying the experience, I was, you know, thinking about how I looked on TV enjoying the experience and and the actor part of me was like, oh, you better make this entertaining, you know, kind of thing. And so I, I did weird facial sort of screamings because, you know, I thought that would be funny. But <laughs> I, it ended up kind of taking away from the experience itself. So um, if I, I I have a, I had an opportunity to do it again, I, I would not make the same decision. I just would want to, you know, experience it. Well, obviously you have a different voice as opposed to Pa's voice, so... Have you ever thought of auditioning again for another Nancy Drew game? Because, you know, you sound like you could be, like, one of Nancy's friends or a friend of Nancy's friends. Absolutely. I Like I said, it was, the entire experience was, was a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, I would love to be a part of another game. I haven't had the opportunity uh, to see any, um, any auditions posted. Uh, or perhaps I've just missed them, obviously, but... But yeah, if, uh, if I saw one, I would certainly go after it again. So what are the current projects you're working on now? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I did um, a film slash web series. Uh, I say that because we're not entirely sure which one it's going to be. Um, and that was uh, probably around October sometime. Um, so a couple months ago. And uh, that one was uh, a lot of fun. I got to work with uh, a very good friend of mine. Actually, several really good friends of mine. Uh, some that uh, I've acted with before and other um, others have been my producer before. But this time, uh, she got to be my director. And uh, that is a show called Alt. Uh, A-L-T. And um, I'm not supposed to say very much about it exactly. But uh, it is so much fun. Um I got to play a um, uncle uh, to a young man who kind of finds that he has the ability to um, hop into alternate realities. And uh, one of the realities he hops into um, is different than all the other ones that he ha has thus far. And so um, that kind of plays itself out. And I got a chance to sort of be a, a comic relief um, which is always fun, but also I got to show a darker side as well. So um, that series, Alt, can be found, you know, um, it's, it's not out for consumption yet, but uh, it has a Facebook page at the, on this time, and that's uh, uh, facebook.com slash alt saga. And um, let's see, uh, some of the other things I've, I've been in is, uh, you can find it at Dead Gentleman, uh, TheGentlemanProductions.com, um, ZombieOrpheusEntertainment.com. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm on I'm on Facebook myself, like uh, an under Brian S. Lewis, and uh, on Twitter at Brian to the Lewis. 
So, yeah, I'm out there. Come by and say hi. Well, before we end our interview, I thought I'd ask some questions to Pa if he's if he's not too busy. Is is that okay? Oh, he's around. Hi, Pa. How are you doing? How is this How is this week turning out for you? Are there a lot of storms thus far? No storms, not quite yet. No, it's been but been blustery though. I know. Have a lot of people been coming in to make sure they are packed up on their supplies? Because I know your store holds everything. Oh yeah. It's been uh, been very busy. I've had about five customers this week alone. Oh my goodness. Well, if, if I were to come into your store and it's my first time there, you know, I know you have some kind of uh, fun little games in the one corner section, but is mm-hmm. there anything in your store that I should definitely buy? Something that is unique that your store has that nobody else does? Hmm, well, I believe we have some uh, alligator jerky, if that fits your fancy. Um, then we have something called a Twinkie that has been on the shelf for about 30 years or more, but it's still fresh, it's just as uh, the day about it. And what exactly do you like to do in your spare time when you're not running the store? Because you're a busy guy, of course, but is there anything you like to do just to kick back and relax? Oh, yeah. I, I like to go uh, dancing sometimes, uh, but my, my hip gives me uh, some problems uh, doing that too vigorously. Uh, I like to uh, walk the boards at a local theater as well. Um, that gives me some uh, some free time and, and uh, gives me a good feeling. What was the worst storm that you've ever seen? Oh, I, I don't really like to talk about it. It's... Uh, kind of whisked a lot of my life away Mm. but you know it's difficult to tell there's just a lot of wind and a lot of rain a lot of the sun goes away it's 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 a wonderful time to be alive when you think about it if you can get away from the fear if there's a specific section that you love to go to just to see the sunrise or the sunset, what would you suggest to somebody who's passing by town to go ahead and take a look at? Well, there's a bluff right on the west edge of town, and uh, that's a good spot on any given day. Uh, sunsets on that side are beautiful to behold, but uh, you can go up there with uh, maybe some soda pop and some... Uh, some chairs and have yourself a good time. But uh, that especially is a fantastic place to see storms. And and you've met so many people who've come into your store, who've been traveling around. Is there any piece of advice that you've gotten from somebody who's entered into your store that you've used in your everyday life? No one really comes in spouting witticisms, uh, so... But uh, some, one day, don't remember who it was, but there's... uh, Sort of an adage that always kind of stuck with me. Be good to each other. I don't know if that was a customer in the store or just something my pap used to tell me, but that is always something I've tried to live by, is be good to each other. I like it, Pa. Thank you so much for being so awesome. You're great. And I hope I get to visit your store at some point. I've only seen it once, thanks to Nancy. But you have everything that anybody could ever want. (laughs) Well, come on down soon. I'll be here forever. That was great. Look at you, Brian. You are so on top of that improv. I love it. (laughs) Oh, thanks. And to conclude our interview, if you could describe your experience working with Her Interactive and now being a part of the Nancy Drew universe, what word would that be? Hire. (laughs) (laughs) Hire! Hire! (laughs) 